Hi everyone. So I have been busy getting the kids ready to go back to school and we have been preparing to do hair, organizing the house, etc. But as I was organizing everything today, this idea came to me and I said it would be fun to actually take a look at my DNA traits or what Ancestry DNA says about my DNA traits. You can add it on for $20. Basically, it takes a look at your DNA and makes a prediction about certain things about your appearance, your sensory, your athleticism, etc. So if you're interested in stuff like that, like I am, then you'll enjoy this video. So let's take a look. All right, so I'm logged into Ancestry.com, my account here, and I am going to click on DNA, go down to Traits, and you'll see here that it provides me different categories or different traits I can explore. I could also compare my traits to another DNA match. So you'll see here it has it broken down by fitness, nutrients, sensory, appearance. Under each of those main categories, there are also several subcategories. And I think the one that most people are interested in seeing would be the appearance. So let's take a look at this one first. The first one listed here is birth weight. I'll add a picture of me as a baby in here just for fun. All right, so under birth weight, it says the DNA we tested suggests that you were probably an average size newborn. So I'm going to pause this real quick and ask my mom just to confirm how much I weighed as a newborn. Actually, guys, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to call her on the phone. Hello. Hello, mother. Hello. Quick question. How much did I weigh when I was born? I'm going to remember that. Okay, let me see. 6'13". 6'13". I know mine was 6'1", Brian was 6'8 and a half. So I was about 6 pounds, 13 ounces? Yes, yeah, that's what I, I want to say. In general, I was an average size newborn. I was a little under the standard average, which would be about 7 pounds, but I came in at 6 pounds, 13 ounces, close enough. Alright guys, so also it tells us over here on the right under genetics and other factors that genetics aren't the only thing that determine birth weight. Other factors, birth weight is heavily influenced by non-genetic factors including the weight and overall health of the mother, whether or not the baby was born early, and the baby sex. Alright, let's take a look at cleft chin. Guys, do you think I have a cleft chin? Let's see. The DNA we tested tells us you probably don't have a cleft chin. Well, guess what? They are right. I do not have a cleft chin. Cleft chin in Mali. 88% of Ancestry DNA members who have this region answered the survey the same way you did. Okay. Well, Mali wasn't at the top of my list. I'm actually going to put up on the screen you know, my Ancestry DNA results again so that you'll see it there. Real quick, since they mentioned Mali, Mali was number two on my list. Cameroon, Congo, and Western Bantu peoples came in as number one. And you'll see here, I'm not going to recap all of this because I've already done this in another video, which I will link. So back to my traits. They are correct. I do not have a cleft chin. It tells you under genetics and other factors what they looked at to determine this. They looked at one genetic marker. So, so far they are two and two. Earlobe type. It says your DNA tells us that you probably have unattached earlobes. I know I reported that I have attached earlobes just because I think I don't know what type of earlobes I have. But I actually think they are indeed unattached. Just looking at the picture here of what the differences are between attached and unattached, I definitely would say that my ears are unattached. And because it looked like I had big ears when I was a little kid, I'll pop it up on the screen. 
50% of Ancestry DNA members who have this region answered the survey the same way you did. Oh, Mally, some have attached and some don't have attached. But I'm going to go with, I have unattached ears. I will give them that. I'll give them three for three. Earwax type. Your DNA tells us that you probably have wet earwax. I know not many of you probably want to hear something like that, but you know I'm trying to be as detailed as possible with what the Ancestry DNA traits report is showing me. I initially said I'm not sure what type of earwax I have, but you know what? Really thinking about it, I actually do think I have wet earwax. Now why I decided to report on the earwax type in Northern Africa, I have no idea because I think that's only 1% of my DNA, but maybe they were just doing it for fun. So I will give them this as well in closer examination of myself. I believe this to be true. So they are now four for four. Let's go to eye color to see what they say about eye color. From your DNA, it looks like you probably have brown eyes. Well, they would be right. I know I mentioned black eyes just because my eyes are so dark that you know, they could be perceived as black, but actually in the light, they are indeed brown. I don't know anyone that actually has black eyes. They are correct that my eyes are brown, but they are a dark brown that you will have to be, I would have to be in sunlight or under bright light to really see the actual brownness of them. So it says down here that they looked at four well-studied genetic markers that have been linked to eye color. Eye color is almost entirely determined by genetics. A few things can change it, including traumatic eye injury, which I have not had. Although there was that one time I dropped the curling iron into my eyeball, but that's another story. <laughs> and certain eye diseases, which I have not had as well. So my eyes are brown. I'm going to give them five for five. Facial hair thickness. Hmm, interesting. Now, if it tells me I should have thick facial hair, we're going to have a problem. Your DNA suggests you or your close male relatives have less thick facial hair. Hmm, interesting. Okay, so obviously I am not a man, so I would have to think about my dad and my brothers on this one. Neither my dad nor my brothers have a lot, of a lot of facial hair. My dad actually used to have trouble growing facial hair. My younger brother, he just recently started letting his facial hair show. And so he has a decent amount. I'll post a pic up here if he allows me. And then my older brother, it's not nearly as thick or dense as my husband. So interesting information. I cannot really say if this is true or not. I guess it could be. Based off of the picture that they're showing here, thick hair, I would definitely say my husband has thick facial hair thickness. I would be interested in knowing what his report shows. Um, but as far as my dad and brothers, I will say they do have less thick facial hair. So I'm going to give them this. You know what? I'll say they are right. So guys, they are now six for six. Interesting information, right? Finger length, let's take a look. Your DNA tells us your ring finger may be longer than your index pointer finger. Okay guys, I haven't had my nails done in quite a while, but just to give you an idea of how my finger looks, I will take a picture. Well, as you can see, my ring finger is definitely longer than my pointer finger. So that is interesting. Over here on the right, it says finger length in Benin and Togo. 62% of people from that region say their ring finger is longer. Hmm, interesting information. It tells you they looked at two significant genes that seem to play a role in digit ratio. Under other factors, this is an interesting bit of information. It says more testosterone exposure in utero has been linked to a longer ring finger. Wow. All right. So, guys, they are now seven for seven. Wow. You know, is it a coincidence or is it actual science? I'll let you decide, but so far, so good. Let's take a look at freckles to see what they say about freckles. 
Your DNA suggests that you're freckle-free. Yes, they would be correct because I don't have freckles. If you watch my videos, you know, you'll see, you'll know. Well, I guess you couldn't know for sure because I know some individuals that actually have freckles and I never knew they had freckles until one day I saw them without makeup. So obviously makeup can indeed hide freckles. So if you know anything about us, you'll know that my husband and I actually carry the gene for red hair. And red hair and freckles are normally associated with one another. Although I myself don't have red hair or freckles, I could potentially carry the gene for freckles, but they're saying that I am freckle free, which I am. However, I do have some aunts and cousins with freckles, and I also have cousins with red hair. I would be interested in knowing if any of my descendants will have freckles, because like I mentioned, I do have some relatives with freckles. My red hair daughter does not have freckles though. For this test, we looked at four well-studied genetic markers that have been linked to freckling. All right, so interesting information here. So they are now eight for eight. Let's take a look at hair color. It looks like you've got the DNA for darker hair. Okay, so this is interesting as well. Now, I know that I carry a trait for a recessive hair gene that creates red hair because red hair is passed on by both parents. Our youngest daughter has red hair, so she had to have received the recessive hair trait from my husband and from me in order to show the red hair. So, although it tells me that I have darker hair, all that means is I have one dominant hair trait for black hair and one recessive hair trait for red hair but whenever those are inherited then the black hair will always show as because it's the dominant hair for this test we looked at six well-studied genetic markers three associated with light lighter or darker hair and three that are linked to red hair I can't wait until I can convince my youngest daughter to take the Ancestry DNA test. She's having a problem with spitting in the tube. Since she won't spit in the tube, I'm going to go ahead and do the um, Q-tip swab. Probably going to use 23andMe. It would be interesting to know if they also predict her hair color correctly. Okay, so we are now 9 for 9 pretty interesting let's go to hair strand thickness your dna tells us you probably have hair strands that are of average thickness all right so let me tell you this when i was younger i had super thick hair y'all even all the way up until i had my last child who is now six i had really thick hair every time i would go to hairdressers hairstylists they would always tell me how thick my hair was. Now that I've had four children, hormonal differences will change your hair thickness, etc. So it's not nearly as thick as it used to be. So I'm a little undecided here. My hair is probably average as of right now. But like I mentioned, when I was younger, I think it was much thicker. Obviously, I have curly hair. So whenever your hair is curly, it seems that it is thicker anyway. So, you know, I'm not going to say they're wrong on this one. I'm just undecided on this one. Let's go to hair type. Okay, so this will be very interesting, right? I'm going to do another video that is going to talk about the different hair types. Growing up, I had no idea that there were different classifications of hair types obviously i knew just based upon looking at individuals that there were different hair types but i didn't know there were numbers and letters assigned to them so i'm going to mention that in another video that i do now this is very interesting though right it says the dna we tested suggests your hair is naturally straight guys this i find very interesting 
So they got the last eight right and one I'm undecided with, but this one is just downright wrong. My hair is curly, but this is blatantly wrong. So let's take a look at what they looked at. For this test, we looked at three well-studied genetic markers that seem to play a big role in how straight or curly your hair is. Factors like climate and age can also play a role in hair texture. Hair texture may also be influenced by genes science hasn't yet identified, but they were blatantly wrong with being naturally straight. No, I do not have naturally straight hair. Let's look at iris patterns. Your DNA suggests you have two types of eye-catching iris patterns. I don't know about this. Just looking at the example here, I would say I don't. I'm going to say this is wrong. For this test, we looked at three well-studied genetic markers that have been linked to iris patterns. Um, no, I don't have this. My eyes don't look like this example. So I'm going to say, no, they're wrong on this one. Male hair loss. Your DNA suggests you or your close male relatives have a low chance of hair loss. <laughs> this is quite interesting. You know why? Because both my brothers and my dad have lost their hair. So I'm going to say that they are again wrong on this one because based upon my male relatives, most of my male relatives have hair loss. Skin pigmentation. Your DNA suggests that you have a darker skin tone. Okay, so you know what? This is an interesting and I guess is really subjective because in the black culture, I am not considered one to have a darker skin tone. I do not have dark skin according to the black American culture. I don't have light skin according to the culture either. I just have moderate or medium brown skin. However, I guess if you asked people of other races if I am considered to have a dark skin tone, I guess from their perspective, my skin would be dark compared to white skin, I guess so. This is going to be another undecided one because it's based on perception. Let's look at the unibrow. Based on your DNA, we think you might have a unibrow. Well, let me just answer this. Even though I do get my eyebrows threaded, I have never had a unibrow. So although I've had very thick eyebrows growing up, they never connected, right? So I do not have a unibrow. So another one where they are wrong. So what did they look at? For this test, we looked at a genetic marker in the Pax3 gene that has been linked to unibrows. So let's see, hair type, iris patterns, male hair loss and unibrow so four incorrect two undecided and nine correct let's look at wisdom teeth the dna we tested suggests you probably developed all of your wisdom teeth well interesting because yes i've been to the dentist and i indeed developed all of my wisdom teeth um, they were all impacted though. They never broke out of the skin. I've only had one removed because only one bothered me and the other one since they were really impacted They weren't bothering me and I had trouble removing the one. I never had any of the others removed by the way For this test we looked at four genetic markers that seem to play a role in tooth development hmm. All right, so they're right on this one so that is it for all of the appearance traits. So the ones they got right, birth weight, cleft chin, earlobe type, earwax type, eye color, facial hair thickness, finger length, freckles, hair color, and wisdom teeth. Okay, so out of 16 appearance traits, they got 10 absolutely right. And the ones that were uncertain were the hair strand thickness and the skin pigmentation. I can't agree or disagree on those, so I'm going to put those in the undecided category. The ones they got blatantly wrong are hair type, iris patterns, male hair loss, and the unibrow. So they got four out of 
16 wrong, 10 out of 16 right, and 2 undecided. So what do you guys think about this? Do you believe in it? Do you think it's just made up? Leave a comment and let me know. And also let me know if you want to explore the other things because I know this video is getting long, so I'm going to go ahead and cut it here. But there are some other interesting things to explore like fitness. And just to give you an idea, it told me that I have a sprinter gene, which is interesting because I did run track when I was younger and I was fast so it's interesting that it indicates that I have this sprinter gene anyway if you want to see this other stuff let me know and um, let me know if you've done this too okay hey guys I will be talking to you all soon like I said we're busy getting ready to go back to school but I am committed to putting out videos every two to three days sometimes even more so go ahead and hit like on this video if you enjoyed it let me know if you want to see more like this I have several videos that discuss our ancestry journey if you're interested in that check out that playlist and also I have things of other topics as well go ahead and hit subscribe join the life with Dr. Trish family and I look forward to seeing you again soon